It's Wednesday, January 22nd, 2020. So I'm gonna do a little unboxing for all of you today. I just got this a couple days ago from SD Bullion. I have a link down below. A lot of people ask me where I buy my precious metals from. SD Bullion, link down below. Look, I don't care where you buy from. I don't care who you buy from. You can buy from the jewelry store, the coin store. You can buy from any company online. You can buy it from the pawn shop. I'm not here to sell you SD Bullion. I'm just here to share you, share with you my purchase from SD Bullion. And I do vouch for them. They've been fantastic to work with. And that's who I've been dealing with for over a year now. And I love them. So I'm gonna open that up, but again, I don't own a gold mine. I don't, I don't own SD bullion. Uh, I do care that you're protecting yourself. So wherever you decide to buy gold and silver from, um, that is up to you. I just believe that it's on sale right now. And I believe it's one of the most important assets that you can own today. You know, we look at what's happening to gold right now. And with all the uncertainty that we see in the world, whether that's geopolitically, uh, whether that's economically, socially, there is a ton of uncertainty in the world and a lot of worry. And gold is climbing a wall of worry right now. It's climbing this wall because of uncertainty, because of this worry of unpredictability in the world. When we look at gold, it's doing well with the booming stock market. And typically that's not common. Gold's doing well next to the strong US dollar. Now, I don't believe the US dollar is actually strong. It's just stronger than the other SIC currencies out there across the globe. You know, but when it comes to gold or silver, there is no cost to hold precious metals and that makes them uh, uh, another positive. You know, Ray Dalio has come out this week and saying that he is adding more gold to his portfolio. He believes that everybody should be adding gold to their portfolio because he's getting very nervous. He sees the massive amount of debt globally, he sees the massive amount of debt right here in America, and he sees uncertainty, he's getting worried. And so what are people like Ray Dalio doing, one of the richest people on the face of the earth? They're buying gold. And so, you know, I think sometimes if we take a page out of the book of the central bank or some of these uh, elite billionaires, we would be much better off instead of just going out, running up credit cards and buying stuff we don't need to impress people we don't like. We know that this country owes a lot of money. We know this country is in massive debt. We know that the, the currency right here in America is being debased every second of the day and it's another reason why we must be holding hard tangible assets like gold and silver look every other value uh, every other asset value is overpriced the two most underpriced assets in, in the entire world are gold and silver right now. They're on sale. And it just blows my mind that people don't see that that they're not taking advantage of the sale. But I'm going to tell you, there are so many things that are happening here in America that just uh, reinforce more reasons of why you need to be protecting yourself, why you need to be holding real money. I believe you should have some cash put away, but I believe that, you know, the longer cash sits there, the more devalued it's going to be. And this is why it's better to store your money in gold and silver. When I see articles like this on CNBC today, supply of homes for sale hits record low and prices suddenly jump. Mortgage rates are about a full percentage point lower than they were a year ago, and they're gonna go even lower. We're gonna see more creative financing, more exotic loans coming to sucker more people into buying homes that aren't qualified to buy these homes. And this is going to ramp up the next collapse. The largest generation, it says right here, the largest generation, millennials, are aging into their home buying years. Now. I read multiple articles last week. I even did a video on it. Millennials are broke. Like literally half the millennials out there are living at home with their parents. Most millennials are drowning in massive debt, credit card debt and student loan debt. And in this article on CNBC, it's mentioning millennials as the next big generation of buyers in the housing market. This is the farthest thing from the truth. So who is or who are buying the houses today? Is it investment companies? Is, is it foreign money? We know that the, um, the, the trade war really st stopped a lot of that foreign money coming in here and investing in real estate. 
And we know millennials are broke. We know that 50% of U.S. workers make less than $30,000 a year. So ask yourself, who are the people buying these homes? Is it hedge funds? Is it investment companies? Or is this just another article that's just garbage? I mean, there's so much uh, that we're reading today that, you know, unemployment's 3.6%, the stock market's booming, the economy's never been better. We read all this propaganda. Is this just another article of propaganda? Is the housing market really booming? Is it booming to the point that we have a shortage? Where's all the money coming from when half of U.S. workers make less than $30,000 a year, 80% of people here in America are living paycheck to paycheck, and 25% of our population is using credit cards now just to survive. So who's buying the houses? Uh, I, I don't have an answer. Maybe you do. Please comment down below if you would. I would really be curious to know what you think. Who are the home buyers in America that is supposedly, allegedly, uh, propping up this market to record-breaking numbers. I don't know. Uh, or are we getting more subprime borrowers? Is, is this what's happening? Or, or are we seeing more subprime loans now coming into the market, uh, allowing unqualified buyers to come in and buy homes like we're seeing in the auto industry? You know, look at the auto industry. Uh, I think it was 93% of the loans, they never even verified income on these auto loans. We have over 7 million people severely delinquent. That's 90 days plus delinquent on their auto loans. Uh, so we have a, a, a huge giant mess in the auto industry now because of subprime loans. Millions of people in this country, millions of people driving cars they cannot afford. And are we now seeing subprime loans back in the housing industry propping this up? I want to know what you think. Please comment down below. Who are the people or what is or who is buying homes in the U.S.? Please comment down below. Just in time, lenders seek congressional approval for no income mortgages. This is on Zero Hedge today. The mortgage industry seeks to eliminate debt to income rules for home buyers. At, at the peak of every boom comes one final act of repetitive stupidity and this may be it the consumer financial protection bureau was requested by industry leaders such as wells fargo bank of america quinka loans caliber home loans uh, the mortgage bankers association national fair housing alliance and others and what they're requesting is to remove 43 percent of dd of dti debt to income requirement on both prime and near prime loans. We're going back to ninja loans, folks. No income, no job, no asset. Remember how well this worked out back in 2008. I mean, it's unbelievable. Uh, history isn't rhyming. History is repeating itself. We are setting ourselves up for the biggest, nastiest, most severe, severe uh, economic disaster the world has ever seen. And you know what? We are going to get what we deserve. Zero Hedge today, housing affordability, crisis sparks, rise of the pod people across America. As the Fed continues to inflate home prices with all this cheap, easy money that's far outpacing wages, you can spend $1,000 to $1,375. It says here, as a millennial, okay, specifically pointing to millennials, they can spend 1000 to 1375 a month to rent a 50, 50, a 50 square foot pod per month in downtown San Francisco's Mission District. So CNBC is telling us that they're going to be the next generation of buyers. And I'm reading right here that they're buying pods uh, in the Mission District. And some of them are equipped with bunk beds. Isn't that nice? This is gaining popularity in San Diego and Los Angeles, even New York City. You can, um, you can buy a studio, 350 square foot studio that costs $645,000. So maybe at some point we'll all be driving little uh, electric cars and living in pods and maybe you'll be lucky enough to have a bunk bed in yours. Bloomberg, reality is officially here. Almost all housing in Greenwich, Greenwich, Connecticut is now selling for discounts to the sticker price. 90% of single family deals that closed in the fourth quarter were far less than what the seller was asking. This was the biggest 
percentage of deals dating back to mid-2017. And it's not just Greenwich. There's articles now talking about what's happening up in Northern California, uh, outside of the Bay Area, wine country. Prices are coming down. Properties are staying on the market longer. So you have days on market longer. Uh, uh, um, and inventory is piling up. And again, sales are slowing down. So it's not just happening uh, in Manhattan and Greenwich, it's happening in Northern California, and it's happening in parts of Southern California too. Things are beginning to slow down, yet we're reading articles that we have a shortage of homes, but who are the buyers? I don't understand. The average discount to the asking price was 9.6%. Sales fell by 12% from a year earlier. Jonathan Miller, president of Miller Samuel Inc., an appraisal company said reality is officially here. We're getting to a point where sellers have to decide, do they want to ever sell or do they want to withdraw? Wealthy buyers are aware of the climate and sensitive to the price, where the average American thinks a lot different. They're, they're not sensitive or aware to anything. Uh, these are the people that want it today. They don't care if they go bankrupt doing it. Uh, they don't care if 50% of their income is going to go into paying a mortgage. They don't care if they're buying in an overvalued market, a bubble, where the wealthy, well, they got wealthy for a reason, all right? They got rich for a reason because they were patient, they were smart, they're sensitive, they're watching the climate. And the average American doesn't think like that. And that's why the average American is gonna pay the biggest price when this whole thing comes crashing down. Look, a lot of wealthy people are gonna pay a huge price too, but there are gonna be a lot of wealthy people out there that are gonna capitalize and take advantage of this wealth transfer. And again, if you think the same way, you can do the same. You can take advantage of a bad situation. And look, I don't want a bad, I don't wanna see a collapse. I don't wanna see a recession. I don't wanna see a Great Depression. These are gonna be horrible times, but I am setting myself up and preparing to take advantage of it. And you know, if, if that means to capitalize on somebody's bad luck, then so be it. You know what, I'm not out spending money I don't have. I'm not running up credit cards. I'm not going to Starbucks every day. Uh, I don't live my life that way, okay? I'm, I'm not a debt slave. And I chose to make sacrifices in my life, cut things out. Maybe, you know, I have to cut some fun out. Maybe I have to cut some recreation out. Maybe I can't take the big trips or drive the big fancy car like so many people do. But I'm doing that, I'm making that sacrifice because I know what's, what's over that mountain, what's over that hill. And I wanna set myself up for security. I wanna set myself up to be in a safe, secure place financially. And a lot of people right now just wanna party and have a good time and they don't wanna, they don't wanna think or worry, worry about the consequences tomorrow. Well, I'm looking down the road, I'm looking at tomorrow and I'm preparing for it. There are a lot of people out there who don't want to think about tomorrow. They could care less about tomorrow. And those are going to be the people that are going to pay the most severe consequence. And I've had to make, you know, changes in my life. I've had to cut things out. I've had to make the sacrifices because of what's coming tomorrow. And so I'm not going to feel sorry for a lot of these people because they wanted to party today. They, they didn't want to put away for a rainy day. Um, they wanted to laugh at people like you and I. They wanted to you know, live on the edge. They wanted to live on credit cards. They wanted to be big shots. And so that's fine. They can you know, have their laughs today. They can judge me today. They can judge you today. But I'm telling you, tomorrow's coming. And we're all going to look back. And we're going to say it didn't really take that long to get to this point. You know, it was only 2008, 12 years ago, when we had the first real crisis that never got fixed. And it's gone by like that. And again, I don't wanna see a financial crisis or a collapse or a Great Depression take place. But just because I don't wanna see it doesn't mean it's not gonna happen, okay? It's going to happen. Look at the data, look at the statistics, look at the math. This is impossible, there's no going back. And so if you wanna party and um, have a good time today and run up your credit cards and, and buy things that you don't need or buy things to impress people you don't know or don't like or to impress family members, if you wanna live high on the hog today 
and get yourself in, into massive debt, that's your choice. But I'm not going to feel sorry for you tomorrow. And to, when tomorrow comes, I'm going to take advantage of these markets every way I can. And if you're holding assets, if you're holding cash, if you're holding gold, silver, and if you're holding things that you don't have debt on, if your house is paid for, if your land is paid for, um, you know, and I know most of us are all going to have some amount of debt. Keep it to a minimum. And you're going to be in the driver's seat. You're going to you're going to be a survivor of what's coming. So, you know, people write, how much of this should I have? How much? You should have as much as you think you should have. You should have as much as, as you can get. How much gold, silver, uh, how much brass should I have? How much food should I have? You should have as much as you can get. And if that's 100 ounces, great. If that's 10,000 ounces, that's great. Do what you can do. We are witnessing the biggest stock market melt-up the world has ever seen. We look at the S&P 500. It's gone up 70 straight days without a 1% loss. I mean, this is insanity. There are people out there that think this is going to go on forever. We're going on 12 years without a correction. Do you really, if you have any com a half a brain, some common sense, you really believe that this is going to go on forever? Uh, th this is absurd. It's insanity. If the market was going up because of the underlying U.S. economy was performing extremely well, we would have reason to celebrate. Unfortunately, this is not the case at all. We have a melt-up being fueled by reckless intervention by the Federal Reserve. People party while the Fed balance sheet continues to balloon out of control. And everything is great as long as stocks continue to go up. And the, the sad thing is people don't care how they're going up. This is pure criminality, okay? This is pure fraud, this whole illusion. And people don't care as long as it's going up. But they're going to care as soon as it starts coming down. Stock prices are nuts. Even the New York Times says we should worry. The day of reckoning is coming. And I'm going to tell you, uh, this is going to be a, a day of reckoning unlike we have ever seen in our lives. We're going, to, uh, we're going to see things that are going to be historical, biblical, things we never thought possible. People are going to finally experience what rough times, what hard times really are. If you think you've got a rough life now, wait till you see what's coming. Stock prices have never gotten to this point without underlying sales to justify su such high valuations. If the S&P were to fall 50% from the current level, that would put us at a point that is relatively normal for good economic times. But of course, our financial markets would not be able to handle a 50% decline in stock prices because the system is so highly leveraged. It would be a disaster unlike any we have ever seen. So the Fed just continues to pump more money into it. There has never been a better setup for a major market meltdown. Who really is going to be surprised when this happens? And the answer to that is a majority of Americans will be surprised because they're going to be taken by surprise. The stock market is breaking records and the U.S. economy is breaking apart. Yet the majority of Americans do not see this. You see it. I see it. And this is why I continue to prepare the best that I can. And look, I'm not a, I'm not a rich human being, um, but I'm a human being that works hard and I do make whatever sacrifices necessary. I'm gonna pop this open for you. And you know, look, I could have um, taken this money and I could have done something else. I could have bought some kind of toy. Uh, I could have went to Vegas. I could have bought a drone. You know, I could have just done something, right? But instead, I just bought some more of this shiny metal because I walk the walk. And sometimes in order to walk the walk, you have to make sacrifices. You have to work hard. You have to save money. And you have to put it where you believe is the right place. And I believe right now the right place is gold and silver. So I'll we'll open this up for you. And this is it right here. I'll do a little close up for you. That's the latest uh, from SD Bullion right there. It's a one ounce panda. I know I'm going to get flat because it's a Chinese panda, but I like to diversify my coin portfolio. Uh, it can be Austrian Philharmonics, 
It, it can be uh, pandas. It can be uh, maple leaves. It can be American eagles. It can be cougarans. I think they're all beautiful. In fact, I, I look at them like art. They're just absolutely magnificent, beautiful, these coins. And so, yeah, I know people are going to hate it because it's, it's Chinese, and I'm no fan of China, but it is a beautiful coin. And I believe that you should be diversified in many ways. And I diversify my coins, uh, coins, rounds, bars, uh, junk, junk silver, whatever. Um, I just really appreciate the beauty. And at the end of the day, it's another one ounce of gold. SD Bullion, link down below.